Go ahead, Nicole. All right. Kind of, kind of. All right, Shalom, Shalom. We're the Hebrew Israelites, you know, coming to you, you know, doing a sit down lesson to the spirit, you know. The weather to have us, you know, to go out this week. So we're doing a sit down lesson to the spirit and probably hop by Shemal Shah. But before we go any further, we'd like to give all honor, all glory, and all praises to our Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Yeah, yeah I will. Next up, double honors to our apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who teach us this truth according to the Bible, who we will, and a double shallow long to all you see to throughout the four corners of the earth. Keep pushing, keep the faith, stay strong. I'm going to hand it off to the brother Kabat. Yeah, man. You know, there's a, <clears throat> a lot going on. Prophecy, as usual. Um, uh, somebody hold me Habakkuk the second chapter. Started the uh, the third verse. All right, um, you're starting to hear more uh, uh, um, talks about war. They're not hiding it anymore. All right, they're not uh, keeping it on the low, low, the hush, hush. And this is all Bible prophecy one on one. All right, Ukraine and Russia are still beefing with each other. All right, and that has the interest of America because America backs Ukraine. All right. Whoever got it first, somebody hold me Luke, uh, Luke 21 and started, uh, uh, I think it's around verse six or somewhere around six, verse six. Uh, the Habakkuk? Yeah. This is Habakkuk chapter two, verse three. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and shall not lie, though it That's tarry. Right. That's right. The vision is, is talking about the prophecies that are written within the scriptures, man. Things are going to come to pass before they come to pass. Matter of fact, um, instead of that, get Matthew 24 and 6. Or oh, whichever one brothers got, it doesn't matter. They pretty much say the same thing. Go ahead, Shamar. Read it from the top. Oh, this is uh, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3. For the vision is set for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and shall not lie. That's right. The end is talking about Esau eating the so-called white man's rulership, man. All right. Esau is the end of the world when you read uh, the book of Second Ezra, chapter 6. All right. And Jacob is the beginning of it, the follower. Jacob is referring to you uh, so-called Negro Latino Native Americans, man. Hebrew Israelites according to the Bible. Okay. It says, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Yeah, though it may seem like it's been taking a while, you know, and guys get tired of waiting, you know, but the prophecies are happening right before their very eyes. If you've been watching, as we've been commanded, all right? We've been commanded to, to, to stand upon our watch, man, and watch for what? These prophecies to come to pass. So we're able to warn our people to get them right with the Heavenly Father. <clears throat> Because when, you know, all hell breaks loose, it's going to be pretty much too late to seek the Lord, man. You know? Whoever got the Matthews or that Luke. Yep. Can, I get, can I get a quick precept? Bring it out. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 42, verse 9. Behold, the former things are come to pass. And new things do I declare... Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Is that not fair? Is not fair? That's not fair from your how about me? I was shouting the world ignorantly and willingly called God in Jesus Christ. All right, that's that name in ancient Hebrew. The Lashwan Kodash. Maybe you believe that here on faith here, at Great Millstone. Right? The Lord sends what? A, a, a warning, man. So that you're able to get yourself right. Read it from the top, Baba Kasha. Isaiah 42 and 9. Behold. The former things are come to pass. What are some of the former things that have came to pass? The first woe, the second woe, 70 AD, all right? The children of Israel being, uh, um, um, you know, shipped off into all these late uh, nations, okay? 
famines, pestilence that have happened. These are some of the things that the Lord talked about in the past. It says, and new things do I declare before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Done. And what are some of the new things that uh, uh, the Lord is declaring? The MOTB, all right? Martial law, Jacob's trouble, okay? Wars and rumors of wars. These are the signs that we're supposed to be focusing on, man. We're not supposed to be focusing on when you know the crown royal is going to come to an end we're not supposed to be focusing on uh, uh, uh when they're going to uh, uh uh restock the shelves we're not supposed to be focusing on uh, uh uh um you know finding a better job okay we're focused on these prophecies and that's it man let the ones who are not meant to get this truth focus on the things of this world mm -hmm. you got it yeah can you quick precept Right this is a second Ezra chapter 14 verse 16 for yet greater evils than those which has <clears throat> I'm really good it says for yet greater evils than those which thou hast seen shall be done hereafter you know that's right greater evil shall be done hereafter man bad times we are at the end of this thing man the, the, the end of the so-called white man ruling period ever Okay, that's why you're starting to see terrible things that are going to happen, even greater things that have happened in the past are going to happen now. It tells you that in Matthew, the 24th chapter, man. You know, it talks about in Second Kings, all right, you know, the destruction of uh, 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 Jerusalem, all right, when the, the, uh, uh, the women were uh, trading off, eating babies, okay? Those things are coming back. Mm -hmm. You know, look, my, I have my, my little brother who's not even, you know, he's not in the truth. You know, he, he had a vision of, of uh, cannibalism. All right. Those things are coming back even worse in these latter times, man. Said he saw a dude just eating on somebody in the street. And the dude looked up, looked, looked up at him and then went back down to eating on the dude's arm. That's what that that's more evils that are coming, man. And that's going that's going to bug Jake the hell out. It's going to bug everybody the hell out except for the men of the Lord. Go ahead. Uh, one more. Yep. This is um Ezekiel seven and five. Thus saith the Lord God: An evil and only evil. Behold, it is come. An end is come. The end is come, it watch it for thee, behold, it is come. And that's what that's what we're proclaiming, man. You know, this is the year of the turn up. The most high is gonna turn up what? The evils, the bad times. All right, the horrific times that's gonna befall you Israelites. Because you gotta remember Jeremiah the 30th chapter told us it was a time of Jacob's trouble. See, you 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 uh, uh Israelites, you so-called Negro Latino Native Americans that's been doing your own thing, doing your own will, going about your own way, all right. Not acknowledging the ways, all right, of Yahweh Bashim was shy. Okay, the Lord is going to visit you, man. You know, whether it's through these pestilence, these diseases, whether it's through famine, whether it's through uh, poverty, being brought down to a lower state, all right, or whether it's through these wars. Because a lot of you, a lot of you men, all right, you're not coming back home, man. You know, I, I I got a co-worker, man. I got a co-worker and um <laughs> you know what what where my, my desk is at is at work is like it's like connected kind of like to like two other desks. And um one of my co-workers was talking to uh, a female, was like, um, uh, you know, when's your husband coming back home? And she's like, Yeah, he's supposed to be coming back home soon. He said, Well, I don't know. They're they're, they're thinking about you know this this war is going on. And she freaked the hell out. She said, "Don't talk about that. I don't want to hear that." You know, she just had a she just had a baby, just had a baby. You no, know, the, the father's off off in somewhere in Korea somewhere, right? Didn't get to see the birth of the baby. With these upcoming wars, them 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 Jakes ain't coming home, man. Mm -mm. You know, and I just sit back and I'm just like, "Hey, that's prophecy, man." 
That's second Ezra, the fifteenth chapter. Was it sixteen? The bridegrooms show more, something to that effect. Mm-hmm. But anyway, you got Isaiah. Count Isaiah three as well. Um, that was it. I All got right. that Matthews or, or another brother want to bring it up. Anybody get that Matthews? Oh, uh, twenty-four. Isaiah, you can bring yeah. it up. Yeah. Uh, bring that Matthews. Hold your precept to come. Right. Bring that Matthew 24. 24 and six. All right. This is uh Matthew chapter twenty-four, verse six. It says, "And you should hear of wars and rumors of wars." Now, who are you going to hear these things from? Right? Who's going to break them down correctly, uh, align them with the scriptures, man? The true men of the Lord, man, which we believe here at Great Millstone, starting when I had apostles and elders on down. All right, to give you that spiritual forecast, man. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> you got us huh no nah, it's just funny you know because uh that's what we're doing here it is you know the news is telling you about war but nobody paying attention you know you gotta watch yeah. these uh, alternative media sites it's some of it's on mainstream you know but who's actually warning our people and telling them that evil is coming the day of the lord is coming as a dark and terrible day you know not many people only the true men that's right you got it shamar it says, starting at the top again, Matthew 24 and 6, it says, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye not be troubled. And why, the Lord, why, why is the Lord saying that? Why is the Lord saying, see that ye be not troubled? Right? Because these, t these times, are, look, it's going to make a lot of people bug the hell out, man. Well, these drafts is gonna come back. You best believe the draft gonna come back. Esau's gonna send all the manpower he got, man. Over to the Levant, over to the Middle East. Because remember, you, you you people are expendable to him, man. You see that on your jobs. Okay. Go ahead. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. And why must all these things come to pass? Because the Lord spoke it. Okay? And we all we all should know by now the words of the Lord are faithful and true. We're seeing it right now. You know? Just us alone. It's these bones that are waking up, man. Going out here prophesying. Look, that, 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 that's, that's the Lord said that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the northern and southern kingdom, the, the hopeful elect coming together on this side. Okay. For nation shall rise against nation mm -hmm. and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Yeah, all these things are going to come to pass. <clears throat> and it's going to start. It's, well, it's really starting now, but uh, war is a great way for a lot of these things to really kick off, man. You see these other nations, they're they're depleting, all right, <clears throat> from their uh their um you know their farming and agriculture and putting all their money into war, man, as it tells you in the book of Joel. All right. These other nations see what's going on. All right. These other nations are making plans for when war pops off. I, I just saw a, a video where um the people in Ukraine were saying how they were gonna go to um What's that neighboring country, man? It started with a D. I can't remember the name of it. But they, you know, they're already making plans for when this thing goes down. What about you Americans? What about you Babylonians? What about you people, man? What are you going to do? We see nation is rising against nation. They see it. And here it is. We're warning the people, warning uh, 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 you so-called Negro Latino Native Americans what's going on. And, you, and yet... You're still not seeking the Lord, man. That was on that, Shamar? Come. Come. Go ahead, um, uh, 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 Nakam, slack you. Uh, you already quoted it, but this is, I'm just going to go straight to the point. Come. This is Joel chapter 3, verse 9. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. A pair of war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. That's what we're saying, man. That's that that that's what's that that's that's the prophecies that are happening right before your very eyes, man. 
All right. These men that has nuclear capability, they're waking up, right? They're putting all their money, stockpiling it into their defense system, man. Okay. And they're talking junk. They're not backing down. And in and, 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 and America, right? You Babylonians don't know how to take it. They're not used to being bullied or talked back to, man. That's how you know this place is going down. Go ahead. It reads on. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords. Go ahead. And your pruning hooks into spears. That's right, man. Things that you farm with, all right, that's going to be turned into weaponry. All right, and that modern-day weaponry is the ICBMs, man. You know, you got these nations uh, pretty much uh, playing target practice, man. Shooting these missiles off, all right? Going off in the ocean, going off here, going off there, all right? Playing with their with their toys. But ultimately, those toys are going to come over here to America, man. Because remember, the Lord told us in Amos, the ninth chapter, he's going to destroy that sinful kingdom, all right? It says, and your pony hooks into spears. Mm -hmm. Let the weak say, say, I am strong. Yeah, because... These other nations didn't have the power once like uh, uh um like America had, man. All right. America was that bully that had the big Glock on the on the block. Right? Now all these other small <laughs> that kind of rhymed a little bit. <laughs> all these other nations um have uh pretty much got the same type of weaponry, man. And they ain't backing down. You know. They ain't backing down because they're fighting for position. They're fighting for who's next to rule. They see that America's going down, man. <clears throat> Somebody hold that real fast. Get Psalms, uh, the first chapter, or on the second verse. You know, they, they, they're, they're, they're uh, uh, fighting for the, to be who's next in rule, you know, especially China. When they don't understand the prophecies that are written within the scriptures, man, they take you how about Shemuel Shah for non effect, man. You got it. You okay? You want Psalms two and one? Why did the heathen rage? Yeah, Psalms two and one. Slack you. Okay, this is a uh, Psalms two and one. Why do the heathen rage, mm -hmm. and the people imagine a vain thing? And that, and what they're what they're raging over is power. What they're raging over is power. Look, somebody hold that real fast. Um, I mean, I quoted it, but um, uh, Second Ezra chapter six verse nine. We'll get that next. You mm -hmm. know, or, you know, the scripture saying, "Why do the heathen rage?" Right, they're fighting, you know, for the next seat. That king seat, man. That king seat is not for them, it's for Israel, and that's prophecy in itself, man. Because what they imagine is vain, it's not it's not the uh the prophecy of Yahweh Bashimi Al Shai. Okay, they're going with their own vain thoughts and opinions, man. Read one time with that. Okay. And brothers are doing stuff in the background. Just mute your mic. This is um this is Psalms two and one. Why mm -hmm. do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. You got it. You know, so ultimately, you know, uh, you know, they have these uh, these different summit meetings, you know, to basically keep Israel in a perpetual state of sinning against Yahweh by Shema and Shai. So what? So that we don't come into power. So we don't get that authority so they can stay the asses out of subjection, you know, because you understand when, when Israel's in power, these heathens, that they're going down. You know, that's how the Lord set it up. That's how. It's supposed to be. We're supposed to be the top nation on the earth, and these nations are supposed to be under subjection to us. Mm -hmm. So they are coming together and, and plans. You know, if Esau either ain't gonna rule, then we're gonna rule. You know, Moab, mm -hmm. that's what Moab is saying. You know, Russia is like, Well, we got sure back, Moab, you know, and that's just all a vain opinion, you see. Right. I'm gonna read I'm gonna read one more verse. It says we are four and five. Okay, count, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
It says, "He, he that he that sip in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision." Yeah, man. He that sit up in the heavens shall laugh, man. Why? Because that's not what the Lord said. No, you had your time of ruling. My people's gonna rule next, man. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get that um, definition real fast. Uh, it's, it's derision, right? Yep. How you spell that? D E R I S I O N. Yep. All right. Because the Lord said you're gonna have them in derision, right? Mockery. Mm. All right. Um, yeah. You want to say something? Yeah, it's a mockery because he, he's watching their plans and nothing that they're doing is working. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's actually very funny, you know, because they're putting all this effort in to try to do things, you know, but none of it is working. You see? Yep. Yep. It says taunting. Hmm. Um, Shall not all these take up a parable uh, uh, against thee, Babylon? How has the a golden city ceased, the oppressing city ceased? You know, because mm -hmm. ultimately, like we're about to read in this uh, second, this is the sixth chapter. Once Esau goes down, we're going to come into power. You know, that's 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 what was written. You know, you got it. Yep. Yep. Was that the last verse on that? Um, yep. That was verse five. You want six? Uh, what does it say? Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Well, you know, it's talking about Yahweh Shai. Yep. You know, Yahweh Shai, he's coming to power next. You know, that's what it's all about. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. When he came on the scene 2,000 years ago, he was telling the 12 to go forth, you know, into uh, the cities where Israel was and to preach and to say, the kingdom of heaven to, to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is the kingdom that was promised to our Lord Yahweh Shai. You see, what you will share with us, you know, us being those joint heirs. You see, ultimately, right. the promise that was given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know, because of Yahweh Shai, ultimately. That's right. Um, I'm gonna read uh, verse eight and we'll close, we'll, we'll finish up on this. It says, Ask of me, and I will give thee the heathen for thy inheritance. In the other most parts of the earth for thy possession. You know, so the heathen are gonna be the inheritance of the nation of Israel, you know, of Yahweh Shai, which you, we being those joint heirs. Joint heirs, yep. You know, in the other most parts of the earth for thy possession, you know, that's why I told you in Revelation the fifth chapter how we're gonna reign on the earth all because of Yahweh Shai's sacrifice, which these guys, a lot of people ain't giving the Lord's credit. He's mm -hmm. gonna come. Oh, can I get one precept? Yeah. And while you're getting that, it also goes back to uh, what Ezra, Ezra said also in the sixth chapter. You know, if the world be made for our sakes, you know, <laughs> why are we in this position? Let you know that people we once knew that what this 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 earth was created for us. That's right. Um, real quick, Revelation 19 and 11. And I saw heaven open and behold, a white horse. And that's talking about our Lord Yahweh Shai when he comes back to crack, crack those clouds. He's coming back with that pure power, the angelic, the angelic power the, in the glory of his father. You see on those uh, chariots, on that fathership. Mm -hmm. That's a, it's described in Ezra as the size of a mountain. Mm -hmm. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, talking about Yahweh Shai. And in righteousness, he does make he does judge and make war. So in righteousness, our Lord's coming back to judge, you know, these other nations and to make war with them. You see, so in the height of World War Three, you know, the Lord's gonna come and snatch the power from all of you people, from all you other nations. Uh verse 12, his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself, you know. And that's why I want to get on his head were many crowns, mm -hmm. you know, because right now, you know, Esau, Edom, you know, he he's obviously in power, you see. But what he some these other nations, they have some power, they have some, you know, authority, you know, and that's why Yahweh is going to come and take all the authority of all these uh, uh, NATO and EU nations, you know, Russia as well, you know, every nation with any type of say so. 
on this world uh, scale, you know, on the world scheme, you see, on this world stage, that Yahweh Shah is going to come and take their power and authority, you know, and, and, and we're going to have next. That's all I had. Right. That's right. So get that second Ezra 6 and 9. This is the second Ezra chapter 6, verse 9. Mm -hmm. It says, For Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. Yeah, because when you go into that word world, it's, it's, it's talking about an age. All right. This is the end of an age of him ruling. All right. And the Lord told you who was next was his people, Yasha Allah. All right. Which is you so-called Negro Latino Native Americans. It's the beginning of it that follow it. So why are the heathens got their panties in a bunch, man? Why do you, well, everything they're doing is in vain? Because it doesn't line up with the prophecy that's written within the scriptures, man. You see? Mm hmm. Was that it on that? Uh. Okay. If, if no one's holding anything, give me um Second Ezra 15. Okay. I, I, I got one real quick. Okay. This is uh, Revelation 11 and. 14 it says the second wool was passed and behold the third wolf coming quickly yeah and that's one thing the lord prophesied about man was these different woes Woe Woe represents destruction all right and when you go even further than that it goes it look what comes after destruction death all right we're just talking about world war one two and now we're uh, uh, uh on the uh the cuffs of World War Three, man. Mm -hmm. And it's going right over you people's eyes, man. You know, here in the faith, we see it plain as day, man. At the water, you how about you have a shot for that? That was it. That was it. All right. Second address 15. This is second address, chapter 15, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Behold, speak thou. In the ears of my people, the words of prophecy. Somebody hold me Revelation 19 and 10. Somebody bring that real fast. And that's how you know who truly has, you know, the wisdom and knowledge to understand the scriptures, man. If they're prophesying what the Lord said is going to happen. These church pastors ain't prophesying the truth. They're not prophesying the downfall of this place called America. Which is spiritually Rome, Egypt, Babylon, Sodom and Gomorrah, Nineveh. All right. You ready for it? Come on. This is Revelation chapter 19, verse 10. Mm -hmm. And I fell at his feet to worship him. Go ahead. He said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren mm -hmm. that have the testimony of Yahweh Shah. Right, so this is John on the island of Patmos getting ready to worship an angel, man. Angel saying, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a brother. You don't need to be worshiping me. Right? Go ahead. It says, worship the most high. Hey, look, that, that, that shows you the power that the angel came in, man. Angel had to come in some type of form of power, man, for you to just bow down like that, man. He didn't look like no ordinary man. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. It says, Worship the Most High, for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. Yeah, so the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the prophesy, man. All right. And that's what we're doing. And you take heed or you get caught up in what the Lord's going to bring to you, man. We just the messengers, man. But the point of that precept is that what? You're supposed to be prophesied, man. People say, oh, I, I don't know who got the truth or who this, who, who's prophesied, man. You know? Mm. Or who, who's out here worrying about, uh, you know, bringing everybody together? Oh, you know, can we just come together all for one, just for, for, one, for one moment? No. Mm. I got a quick reset. Go ahead. This is the book of 
Amos <coughs> chapter uh, 3. Uh, I'm going to start at 7, the points in 8. Mm -hmm. It says, Surely the Lord God would do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. How hard is that to understand, man? How hard is that for our people to get? The Lord's not going to get off his, 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 his uh, throne and do nothing. He's going to reveal what he has to say, which is a secret. And a secret you don't tell everybody, man. You know? To his servants. When you're a servant, that means you have to serve. You can't expect to get this truth if you're not serving Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai his way. And that's why a lot of our people can't get it, man. Because they serve themselves. Go ahead. God, it says, um, surely the Lord God would do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Mm -hmm. the, the lion have roared, who will not fear? The Lord, Yahweh Shema Shai, have spoken, who can but prophesy? That's right, man. Who can but prophesy, man? The Lord tell you to go out there and do something, you're going to do it. And that's what we're doing, man. We're prophesying, man. And that people should be, you know, they should be happy. They should be, you know, you know, uh, trying to get this word and grow, all right? seek salvation but what well, people don't want it man they don't want this message because it comes from people that look like them you know but remember the lord deals with the lowly with the meek mm -hmm. anything else oh um, that was it that was just backing up how the true prophets will be prophesying you know mm -hmm. did they speak in the words of the lord that's right Go ahead, go ahead back to uh second address 15. The second address chapter 15, verse 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy. Now you gotta you gotta you gotta uh sit back and say, Well, who's the Lord's people? All throughout the scriptures, the Lord's always talking about his people, his people. His, my, those are possessive words belonging to someone, mm. right? And that's what we go out there and preach to and warn okay. the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, wherever they are scattered, because they are scattered in all uh, 18 nations, man. You want to preach up on that? Bring it out. This is the Matthew 2 and 6. And mm -hmm. thou Bethlehem and the land of Judea art not thou the least of the land? Art thou not least among the princes of Judea? For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. You got it. You know, so the Lord's people are the so-called Negro, the Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, you know? And they'll be, you know, they're being called according to the book of Baruch being called by uh, Proverbs and by words according to Deuteronomy 28. You know, we, we fell on these curses, you know, uh, Romans, uh, the ninth chapter in the land that was said, ye are not my people. There shall it be said, ye are the sons of the most high, Hosea 1 to 10, you see. Uh -huh. So the Lord's uh, people, here it is, you know, uh, are the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And we're starting to wake up to who we are. You know why? Because of our Lord's sacrifice and Him loosening the seals. You know now we have the Rakar Kodash, the Holy Spirit, to understand what these scriptures are talking about. You know, in the in the prophets of the Lord, they get the they get the mysteries, they get the secrets, and they go out there and preach them on the highways and byways and warn the people. I got um a quick one, real quick. Right up. This is a uh um this is Matthew's ten. I'm a, a read verse 26 and 27 fear them not therefore for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and mm -hmm. hid that shall not be known you know and us being the israelites that was hid and that was a secret for a while but now you know after three days and a half the spirit of life will enter back into us and now right starting with Abba Bibbins, you know and um the the elders that were for the apostles and elders and the apostles and elders that kept the uh, kept that fire going, you see, and men down like us today, 
You see, we're we're uncovering the the secrets of the, the the scriptures of who we really are. You know what the heavenly Father's will is in these last days for all hell to break loose. You know, and why is all hell gonna break loose? That's that's to punish the world and the wicked for their iniquity and their evils. You see, uh, and to uh, set up a righteous kingdom down here upon the earth because in order for the kingdom of heaven to be established, this kingdom has to go down. And according to Revelations, thus with great violence shall that great city Babylon be overthrown, you know, cast into the sea and destroyed. It says, um, verse 26, one more time, fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light, and what you hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops, you see? And that's why, you know, we go out there on the highways and byways and warn the people of, you know, and tell tell the world, you know, we're revealing unto you what the Heavenly Father, what his plans are for, for this, for the upcoming future, the very near future, you see? And for you to get right and get ready and prepare spiritually. The only uh, commodity, only <laughs> only asset we need is Yahweh by Shema shine this wisdom, this knowledge. That's right. That's right. I'm right on. So where we at? Still in the book of Second Edges. Go on. Second Edges chapter 15, verse 1, at the bottom. It says, Which I will put in thy mouth, said the Lord, Yah by Shema mm -hmm. and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Yeah, so the words of the Lord are faithful and true, right? Scriptures talk about wars, rumors of wars, famines, pestilence, which is going to get into. The Lord said, what I say is faithful and it's true, which means what? It's going to come to pass. It's going to happen. Mm. All right? And now people should be wondering how they're going to dodge this this bullet that's coming, man. This this, this spiritual bullet that's coming, man. Go ahead. Um, I got a quick precept. Go ahead. Um, This is uh, Numbers. Chapter 23, uh, verse 19. The Most High is not a man that he should lie, mm -hmm. neither the Son of Man that he should repent. Yeah, the Lord said, told you in Isaiah the 14th chapter, as he has spoken, so shall it stand, man. Mm -hmm. All right? So the Lord is not going to lie. Nor the Son of Man, at least he repent, man. All right? That's right. Our Lord ain't going to change his mind for no one. Mm-mm. It says, have he said, and shall he not do it? Or have has he, he spoken? I'm sorry. No, he got, has he said wars, right? And shall he not do it? World War Three. We just we just read it in um, Revelation 11 chapter. Okay. The Lord's going to do his will. He's going to do what pleases him. Okay. That's why people need to understand. That's why I people need to get on board with what the Lord has planned, man. You got it. Come. Okay. It says, Have he said, and shall he not do it? Or have he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, man, because look, the, the Lord backs up his words, man. You know, because he look, we can we can sit up here and say something. But we're just men, right? You know, we can't, we, we have no power to back up what we say, really, if it's not through the scriptures, man. Because everything the Lord has said and prophesied has came to pass. You know, they get, they have, uh, uh, you know, uh, Esau's warning about the flood, how true it was. You know, they send their scientists out, you know, they find artifacts and things. Uh, 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 um, you know, um, when uh, Moses uh, 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 split the sea, all right, mm -hmm. they're finding chariots from 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 um, from Pharaoh, right? Mm -hmm. So these things have happened, man. You got it. Go on, go on. That was it. That was it on that. Done. Yep. Bring it up. This is Isaiah chapter 46. The point is in 10, but I'm going to start at 9. 
This is Isaiah chapter 46, verse 9. Remember the former things of old. For I am Yahweh Bashima Washai, and there is none else. I am Yahweh Bashima Washai, and there is none like me. That's right, man. Because the Most High stands alone. He tells you that you are in the 32nd chapter, man. Okay? There ain't no counsel with the Lord. You know? What the Lord says goes, man. He creates the creator of all creators, cre creators, man. You know? But what, what Hawaii I'd like to say, you know, your hands are too short to box with the Most High. You know, look. look what he prescribes, you can't go against, man. Read again. This is Isaiah chapter 46, verse 9. Remember the former things of old. So we're supposed to be remembering this, man. These are former things that we once knew. Go ahead. It says, For I am Yahweh by Shema was shy, and there is none else. Mm -hmm. I am Yahweh by Shema was shy, and there is none like me. There is none like him, man. You know, going back to these false idols, gods, all right, they can't be compared to our power, man. They live in a realm that our power created. <laughs> Therefore, look, look, the words of the Lord speak, man. Hey, look. Hey, look, man, you just can't go against them, man. Time and time again, Esau has tried to disprove the Bible, disprove the words of the Lord. But facts always comes up, man. That was it. Oh, well, next, next, on oh, one more verse. Okay. This the point. Declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying. My counsel shall stand, mm -hmm. and I will do all my pleasure. Yes, yeah, so the Lord's counsel is going to stand, man. Who's going to question him? Who's going to uh, uh, pull him to the side and be like, you know, yeah, well, I don't think he should be doing this. <laughs> you know, uh, let's sit back at the round seat, the round table, and discuss this again. No one, man. No one. What he says goes. Read that last part again. Mm -hmm. Just the last part? Yeah. Uh, it says, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. See, that's what these heathens don't understand. Going back to Psalms, the second chapter, they're raging for nothing. It didn't say that the Esau goes down, Moab is going to come up. All right. It didn't say that the Esau goes down, this nation is going to come up, another heathen nation. No. Israel. Israel's turn, man. Mm. Go ahead. That's it on that. Mm. Yeah, so let's get, get back to Huh? Can I get two? Can I get two real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, this is um Sirach 39 and 16. All the works of the Lord are exceedingly good, and whatsoever he hath commanded shall be accomplished in due season. Mm-hmm. Yep. All the works. Of, oh, you got it. You got it, bro. You got it. Yeah, come on. It says, I'm going to read one more time. It says, all the works of the Lord are exceedingly good, and whatsoever he hath commanded shall be done in due season. You know, mm -hmm. and like it tells you on Isaiah 55, you know, his mouth hath commanded, the mouth of the Lord. You know, are the prophets? So we out there in the highways and byways, you know, with the with the power, which is the which our power is the word. You see, I'm a, I'm a, a, a you know you know speaking these things, and and we 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 coming into that season where these things are being accomplished. You know, we're we're living this in the times and seasons of war, evil, and of pestilence. You see, uh, real quick, Ecclesiastes eight and four, where the word of a king is. There is power, you see, in the word of a king, the, the ultimate king is the Heavenly Father. You know, he's a great king. You know, where his word is, you know, his word is in the, in the minds of the elect. 
you see, in which they go out in the highways and byways and, and preach his word. There is power. So there's power in what we're saying. There, there's a there's a there's a driving force and energy, you know, of what we're saying, you know, and causing these things to come to pass. The scripture says, not my word like a fire that break up the rock in the pieces. You know, so the rock, you know, represents these governments. And when we got there in the highways and byways, we were chanting down Babylon. This this place is going down. You gotta understand when we say that Yahweh by Shema Shai is going to destroy America, you know, as it is written that he said he would, you know, the Lord, he's like, look, well, shh, dang, they said I was going to do it. Now, now, now I'm going to do it. You know, now I'm going to show everyone what I'm about. And I'm about business. But it says, Ecclesiastes 8 and 4, and this, this is it for me. It says, where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? So, you're not going to be able to ask the Lord, oh, well, what, what are you doing? You know, like, oh, why, why, why do you want to do this? Why do you want to do that? You know, you, you ain't be able to say that because the Lord got all the power. You see, he's just going to do it. And you're going to have to either fall in line or, or, or get pushed out of the way. That's right. That was it. That was it. Kyle, somebody hold me straight. Huh? Kyle, get one more piece of come on. Back in my side. Yeah, somebody, before you get that, somebody hold me uh, Sirach 39 and 16. Uh, mm. Go ahead, Nicole. Uh, I'm probably grab it right now. Now, go ahead and write your precept. Okay. I think that's what I just read. Yeah. Yeah, I just read that Sirach 39. Oh, damn. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. That's weird. Somebody give me Psalms 145 and 17. Mm. Go ahead, Nicole. I think I might have lost it. If I can't find it, it's all good, bro. You can't find it? Yeah, it was pretty much. Uh, uh, it's in song. The Lord does whatever he pleases, pretty much. Oh, okay. Right. okay. I got that. This is Psalms 115 and 3. But our God is in the heavens. He have done what whatsoever he have pleased. That's right, man. The Lord does whatever he pleases. And if it, if it, if his will, right, is to cause war, evil, bad times, then that's what he's going to do. Your mindset should be, well, how can I be protected? How can I survive these things? How can I overcome in these latter days? You know, when we're going to give you precepts, you know, detached from the world, you know, seek the Lord, trust in him, things like that. All right. A lot of people not even doing that. You got it, bro. Um, yeah, bro's got that Psalms 145. Yeah. Who you was just reading? Oh, that was me. Read it one more time. Okay, come on, come on, my bad. <laughs> yeah, nah, you good. This is, uh, this is Psalms uh, 115 and 3, but our God is in the heavens. He have done whatsoever he have pleased. He have done whatsoever he pleases, man. That's heavy. Esau can't do whatever he pleases. He's still on the puppet strings for Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. According to Job, what's that, the 20th chapter? He uh, 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 sealed their instructions when they're on the bed, you know? Yeah. Job 33. Job 33, the water. <clears throat> okay, the most high stands alone. Go ahead, yeah. um, Nicole. Mm -hmm. Back a second, Edgers. No, you said a precept, right? Well, that, that was the one, but I was already. All right, um, 145 song, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, you can bring that, yeah. This is Psalm 145 and 17. Mm -hmm. says, Yahweh Bashim Shai is righteous in all his ways mm -hmm. and holy in all his works. Yeah, mm -hmm. man. So what Yahweh Bashim Shai says and does is righteous, man. All right. You know, people may have a problem with it. Don't like how it goes down. Well, who's going to question him? Who, who, who's going to bring his, his word up to him and be like, hey, look, this is not going to go down. Not even Esau can do that. He tries. 
but everything that he's doing is being exposed right now. Mm. Read it one more time. You you want to say something, Zah? Yeah, that's <laughs> weird. <Spirit>, yeah, <laughs> it's scripture say you can't lay anything to the to the Lord's elect. You know that's that's just the men that the Lord justified. So how much more the heavenly Father? You know what I mean? <laughs> right. That's right. So yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yes, yeah, Spirit. <laughs> Psalm 145 and 17, it says, Yahweh Bashim Shai is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. There you go, man. Righteous. You know? Holy and separate, separate from your thoughts. Remember the Lord said, my thoughts, not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. Right? Because if the Lord took on the ways of man, it'd be wicked as hell. We would never get out of this situation, man. Lord be marching with BLM. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We shall overcome spirit. The Lord's mindset is on destroying this place, man. Along with you two-thirds in it. And we're going to get back to that. That was it, Shamar? Huh. So go back to that second edge, verse 15. Mm -hmm. This is second edge, chapter 15, verse 3. Fear not the imagination against thee, let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. Yeah, man, we don't fear the imaginations of the people. All right? Because their 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 thoughts don't matter. Okay? We don't care what they think about us. They can't lead us down the road of salvation. Okay. We don't care about the non believers. That's how that's how how strong and heavy this truth is, man. Got you, you know, in a mindset. You pretty much a, a loner in this thing, man. When you're not around brothers, even if you live with people, man, they're not they're they're not they're not in this truth, mm -hmm. you know. And that's the power you held by Shimei was shot, man. So we don't care if they don't believe, man. You you, you got us, huh? No, I just agreeing with you. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Go ahead and come. Mm -hmm. It says, for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Yeah, all the unfaithful of our people, man. They're going to die in their unfaithfulness because ultimately they don't, they don't believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. They don't believe. And we know what the scriptures say about those that don't believe that. Look, um, get, uh, what was it, Psalms 14? Mm-hmm. I believe it's Psalms 14. 14 and 1. Yeah, I got it. I'm right here. Come on. This is uh Psalms 14 and 1. The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. Yeah, the fool. Our people are a bunch of fools, blockheads, man. They don't believe in your how about Shim Yahweh Shah, man. They don't believe mm -hmm. in the true uh uh uh, uh heavenly father's only begotten son. They don't. You, look, the Lord said, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. You got to believe in the whole book, man. A lot of people pick and, 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 and uh, you know, take out the hard, crunchy stuff, you know. They're not truly believers, man. Yeah, um, this is the, uh, this generation right here is, you know, they took a toll. This is, this generation is the, the largest generation that does not believe in, in a higher power. Mm-hmm. You know, really because the it's really because of the Christian church and their image that they have painted for, you know, Yahweh Shah that he's a God of love and love only. So when judgment, you know, which we know the Lord is the author of judgment as well, you know, when judgment happens to them, you know, our family member, that, that deters them from the truth. That's why the scriptures say, if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them that believe not. So these people, like you said, they don't believe in the higher power. They don't believe in Yahweh by Shimon mm -hmm. Uh Psalms 14 and 1, the fool have said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that do of good. Wow. So Lord just gave you a rundown on them, man. None of them that do good, man. 
So if you're not doing good, what purpose are you serving on the earth, man? That's why we don't care about them, man, because the Lord's going to take them out anyway. They're a lost cause right now, man. They're dead weight. You don't hold on to dead weight. You get it off, man. That's what it was going to do to our people, the non-believers. They're going to mm -hmm. perish in their unfaithfulness to you. How about you, me? I was shy. And we're seeing it, man, whether it's family members, close friends, people you work with on your job, people in your neighborhood. Go ahead. Um, I got one back from what you said. Okay. This is Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 22. Let the multitude perish then that were born in vain. Yeah, born in vain, man. Life of no value. All right? Because they're not bringing value to the earth, man. They're not bringing value to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. They're not pleasing him on the earth. And let my great be kept and my plant for with great labor have I made it perfect. And that's talking about the elect, man. And that's talking about the elect. Remember the Lord said he had a, uh, matter of fact, um, let me find it real fast. Uh, Read it one more time, Azar. Come on, come on, come on. You think about Romans 11? I'm just, I don't know. But, um, nah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nah. That's what came in my mind when you said that. But um, this is uh, 2 Ezra 9 and 22. Let the multitude perish then, which were born in vain, and let my great be kept, and my plant, for with great labor have I made it uh, perfect. Um, I'm, can I start? Uh, I'm going to read verse 21 real quick. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Start from there, yeah. Yeah, second Ezra is 9 and 21. And Fine. I saw and, and spared it greatly and have kept me a grape of a cluster and a plant of a great people. Mm -hmm. You know, so you think you have a you have a cluster of grapes. The Heavenly Father, he kept him one grape out of the whole cluster and threw the rest away. You know, so the, the, the two thirds, like you said, the, the Heavenly Father, he has cut them off. You know, mm -hmm. um, that, that was it. Somebody hold me. Uh, this is my last precept. Somebody hold me Zechariah 13 and 8. Okay. Yeah, because, you know, the, the, the two thirds of our people, they, they're going to get cut off in these last days. They're getting cut off now. They're being cut off now, man. Ready for it? Bring it up. This is Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord Yahweh Shah, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. Yeah, man, two two thirds of the sixty six point six percent of the nation of Israel are gonna be cut off and they're gonna perish in these last days, man. All right, and we're living in the year of turn up. So you're gonna start seeing more and more of this, man. Whether it's through these uh these famines, these pestilence, these diseases that the Lord has in store for our people. All right, or whether it's through the sword, one way or the other, the Lord has something prescribed for two thirds, man. And you don't want to be a part of that. That's why it's very important, very important. All right, to hearken to the words of the Lord. Remember, First Samuel, the second chapter, tells you the issues of life and death belong to the Lord. So, if someone has the right or has the power to put you to death, wouldn't you not serve them? You watch these movies, and someone has a gun. They say, "Hey, uh, give me all the money." <laughs> so they just kick back and be like, Psh. you know, no, they 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 do it in haste. Why? Because they have the power to take their life. That's how Jake should be. What? I thought it was the devil. No, it's the Lord that controls that, man. So that's what we need to be serving and seeking. If not, you're going you're gonna to catch a flight back to the spirit world. First class. You know? 
He got it. It reads on. But the third should be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire. Yeah, going back to that that grape. You know, that one grape out the cluster, man. And me being bought to these fiery trials now, man. These fiery times now. All right. And we're gonna go through more more fiery trials, but look, we we the Lord's gonna be with us. The Lord's gonna be with us, man. As long as we keep the faith. And that's what it's about. It's not having faith. Who why would you want to have faith in this place, man? You gotta work yourself to the bone. Can't vacation. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Gas high as hell. Baby mama asking when you gonna send the send send the, the, the CS. You know? Woman asks you, when you gonna do this, when you gonna do that for me? Man, this this ain't living. You got it, bro. Mm -hmm. And I will bring the third part through the fire. And I will refine them. As silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. They should call upon, they should call on my name, and I will hear them. That's right, man. You know the Lord is going to bring the, the, the elect through these fiery trials, man, which is to refine them, to make them more pure. Just like you do precious metals, man. You put them through the fire to get the impurities off of them, man. You know. To make it that perfect stone, that perfect metal, that precious metal, man. The ways of the world is not going to do this to us. It's going to further uh, corrode us, right, mold us, until we eventually die. Going back to Micah 2 and 10, mm -hmm. this place will pollute the hell out of you, man. So when you're catching these fiery trials, hey, look, man, count it all joy. Because the Lord is finding favor in you to be part of his great, his cluster that he has kept to himself to be delivered in these latter days. So, yeah, how about Shimon Shah pass the mic off to the next brother? Okay. Uh, were you brothers holding anything? Mm -hmm. uh, can you get a second as there's nine and one, Papa Shah? Yep. You know, and we'll, uh, we just go from there. You know, through the spirit and power of Yah by Shema Shai, because we, you know, we in those times like the bros going into, you know. So we just gonna uh, kind of keep all uh, keeping that spirit, you know. You ready? Ninety one. Uh, yeah, you can read it more. All right. The Compose of the Ashes three. Uh, it says he answered me then and said. Measured out the time diligently in itself. Yeah. So what we should be doing, you know, as the watchmen, you know, as the believers of Yah by Shema Shah, as those five <coughs> wise aversions, you know, who are preparing for the return of our bridegroom, you know, for the return of Yahweh Shai ultimately, you see, the, the only begotten son of the heavenly father who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. We should be uh, measuring the times. You know, here it is. You know, you can see the signs of the times that are going on, but you have to measure them. And what's 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 the what's the what's the measuring stick? The the Holy Bible, because written uh, within and without these scriptures, you know, are, are prophecies of the end. You know, telltale signs of what would be happening in the in the last days before our Lord would make His second return. You know, and it's prophesied that time like none other is to come. You know, a time of evil, a time of trouble. You got it, bro. It says, <clears throat> and when thou shalt, and when thou seest part of the signs pass, which I have told thee before, mm -hmm. then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Yeah, when thou seest part of the signs pass, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand. Then shall I well understand. You see, so when you start seeing these things come to pass, oh well, this is this is what you know, this is what the, the, the prophet's been talking about. You see? 
the, you're going to start seeing the uh, uh, the uproars of the people. You see, you're going to start seeing the, the wars and rumors of war. You're going to start seeing these things speak. And that understanding should come. Like, oh, the Lord, he's near. The Lord's right at the door. I got to get myself right. I got to repent. You know, I got to turn back. You see? And that the Most High, he, he's starting to vi visit this place. How does the Lord visit you via judgment by bringing a judgment upon you? And that's why, you know, this is why the prophets are still out there. You know, while, you know, things are getting bad, the Lord, this is the the, the year of the Lord turning up. Things, things are turning up, you know, but the Lord still has his prophets out there. So you can see, look, look you know, things are turning up, but the doors of mercy are still open. Are you going to turn back and repent? Or are you going to continue to rebel against the Lord? You got it. Read down to uh, verse 6. It says, Therefore, when it says, therefore, when there should be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're seeing. Earthquakes, uproars of the people. You see, if you download the earthquake app, every, you know, really every year, every year, earthquakes are getting more frequent, you know, and the magnitude of the earthquakes are getting more severe. Upwards of the people, I mean, shoot, man, upwards of people have been going on, you know, uh, you know, for for a while now, you know, yeah, the, the you know, and more more consistently ever since it was the BLM, you know, then you had now 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 only had BLM, now you got oh uh, the Blue Lives Matter, you know, oh no long now now the Proud Boys, you know, now now it's a uh, uh, these uh the on these restrictions and these different uh mandates, you see. All these uproars of the people are going on in the world. You see, not only here in America, but in Australia, Canada. You see, all these uh, nations. What happened to the yellow vest? You see, out there in um, uh, what was the Paris? You know, mm -hmm. what, what happened to them? You see, these are these are the signs to show you that we're at the end of this thing. You got it, brother. You got a precept. You got it, bro. It's Proverbs twenty nine and two, going mm -hmm. back to the uproars when yep. the righteous are in a th huh. You got it, brother. Okay. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. Yeah, and at the end, and it and it's prophesied that oh uh, that what we read earlier that Esau is the end of the world, you know, and that the earth was given into the hands of the wicked for a time being. You see, so and that he will cover the faces of the judges thereof, that he will set himself up to be God. You see, so it's the proof is the proof the proof is in the pudding. That Esau, Edom, is the devil that the Bible speaks of and that he has authority, that he's not done away with, and that he has authority in the planet Earth today. And that he, you know, is that red horse written about in Revelation to take peace from the Earth, you know. So this is that guy, you know, he's still here on the scene causing uh, uh, mayhem, you know, causing uh, uh, confusion in the world. Babylon the Great, you see, the land of confusion. Go back to the Hebrew word Babal, which means confusion. You know, and it's causing the people to be in the uproar, you know, to cry out. The people, the whole, the whole, uh, 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 the whole creation, you know, they're earning. These seasons don't know why they're crying for. You know, they don't know that they really need us in power. You know, everybody needs the Israelites back in power. And that's when things are going to be back in order. You know, like we were at the beginning of that verse. When the righteous are in authority, the people are going to rejoice. And that's why. If you don't want the kingdom of heaven uh, uh, to come and play and you're an Israelite, there's something wrong with you. You know, and that's why, you know, uh, 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 you're, you're sick. Like it tells you in Isaiah and the Lord is going to cut off, uh, uh, you know, the Lord. It's better to die than to live a, a, a life full of a sickness. You see, like it tells you in the book of Sirach. You got it, brother. Any more in that, Brother Kabad? Yeah. No, I got another preset real quick. Okay. I'll, I'll give you the point. Is the Sirach 10 and 3. It says, An unwise king destroyeth his people, but through the prudence of them which are in authority, the city shall be inhabited. Yeah, an unwise king will destroy his people. Here it is. You got a kingdom. The the, the people under you are your servants. They're supposed to work for you. Mm -hmm. You know? You want them to be in good health. You want them to be in good spirit so that you can forward your kingdom. But Esau, Edom, his whole time that he's been in power, has been to destroy the people, destroy uh, Israel, destroy us, you know, destroy the whole earth, you know, while he's at it, you know, but a wise king, he's going to instruct his people, and that's what we're going to do when we get in the power, we're going to instruct our people, we're going to instruct the whole earth, 
you know, mm-hmm. in these other galaxies, you know, when, when, when we uh, migrate there, you see, mm-hmm. and we're going to instruct them, you know, according to the uh, uh, Isaiah 2 and 1, you know, according to the ways of Yah by Shema Shai. You got it, brother. Yeah, I should, I should have read from the top since you said all that. This uh, oh, Sirach okay. 10, 10 and 1, it says, I'm going to go through it quick. A wise judge will instruct his people, and the mm-hmm. government of a prudent man is well ordered. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's good. It says a government of a prudent man, a wise man is well ordered. What do mm-hmm. you think that we're praying for in Matthew the sixth chapter? Let thy will be done on earth mm-hmm. as it is in heaven. You know, we, we want order to be done down here upon the earth. And here it is, you have these wacky tacky Christians that pray for that every day, but yet they want to come up and buck against the words of Yahweh by Shemal Shai. That proves that they are none of the Lord's because the Lord's sheep hear his voice and they follow him. He knows them, you see. And they will be in the spirit of measuring the times, you know, they'll be in the spirit of, of fleeing the shadow of this world because they know that this is not our rest. You got it. Mm-hmm. It says, as the judge, verse two of the people is himself. So are this, his officers and what manner of man the rule of the city is. Such are they that dwell therein. Mm-hmm. That's why wickedness is everywhere. You know, yep. wickedness is everywhere. You know, and wickedness doesn't bring you, uh, 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 you know, wickedness doesn't bring, you know, doesn't, doesn't, the, the, the joy of the hypocrites, but for a moment, it's, it's not meant to last forever, you know, and now, you know, now Esau Edom is at his end, so now he got, he got to put the choke on these people, and that's why they're up for and that's why, you know, he got to establish his NWO, and that's why they're in the up for because everything, those goodies of that sin that they were having are being taken away, you see, those mm-hmm. pleasures. One more quick one, one more quick one. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. he said something. This Isaiah 48, 22 says, There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. Yeah, there is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. So the, the peace is not coming. You know, Esau, you don't, you don't get any peace. And those following the ways of Esau, you know, peace ain't coming to you. You know, peace is not coming. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come up upon them. Why? Because our people, they're not measuring the times. That's why it's going to happen suddenly upon them. Which your brother can hold that, and then we'll go back. If you, if you, come on, if you don't got anything, you can go back to Second Ezra nine. Okay. Okay. Uh, you got it, Shamar. This is uh Second Ezra chapter nine, verse four. It says, "Then shall, then shall thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the beginning. I mean, from the days that were." Before thee, even from the beginning. Yep. Uh, go ahead. It says, for like as, <clears throat> for like as all that are, it's like it, for like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. Yeah, that's the point, you know, that was it, and that the end is manifest, the end is revealed, you see? And, and we understand these things. The, uh, uh, the things that were in the four times written for our learning that we through patience and the comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So now we bring these scriptures and we're getting hope. You know, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Lord said this. Oh, look, this happened too. This is why we're in this position. See, we know why we're here. We're, we're, we're living our life according to the purpose that Yahweh Shema Shai put us on this earth for. You know, Jeremiah 1 and 4. You know, and you know, well, that's our lot, Lord's willing. You see, and, and and the believers, you're coming back in your lot as well. You know, and the non-believers, you're coming back in your lot. You know, so we can we pray to continue in our lot. You know, as a believer of Yahweh by Shema Shai at the end of the day. You know, and the end is being uh, made manifest. The prophecies of the scriptures are 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 going mainstream. You see, uh. Can the brother get that Thessalonians? Yeah, hey, I got this. You the Ecclesiastes? Um, after Thessalonians, we'll get that. The doll, you got it? Uh, the brother lagged out. Oh. Uh, 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 hey, brother, uh, Godal, you got, uh, can you get, sir, uh, first Thessalonians 5 and 1? No, the, li- the live stream breaking up. 
Come on, come on. Whoever got it, brother. You good, brother. First that's one is five or one. Come on. You ready for it? Yeah, pop for sure. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse one. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it says, But the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. Yep. It says, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of Yahweh Bashim al Shah cometh as a thief in the night. Yeah, so the Apostle Paul is saying, look, you already know the day of the Lord is coming as a thief in the night. So you, you you should already know what's up. You should already be on your watch. You should already be watching. You should already be searching the scriptures and getting to the things, you know, and looking for the signs of the Lord's return. You know, because when he comes out of that thief in the night, that's going to be upon those who are not watching. You know, you, you, you're part of the brethren. You're part of the body. You're supposed to know what's going on. Go ahead. It says... <clears throat> For when they shall say peace and safety, mm -hmm. then sudden destruction cometh upon them yep. as a travail upon a woman with child, Yep, and they shall not escape. Yeah, so it says, uh, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. And who's, who's the narrative of saying peace and safety? You got these, uh, your church pastors, you got they have the circumcision. They are the circumcision of those, the Israelites who know they are Israelites who are teaching false doctrines. <clears throat> you see? It says you got the you got the Christians, you got these uh presidents, these politicians, all talking about peace and safety is coming for you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. For you Americans, this this careless city, you know, that that dwelling carelessly, carelessly. You see? Read one more time. Uh first Thessalonians five and three. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Yeah, so the, the, the sudden destruction is going to come as travail upon a woman with child. When a woman has a child, you see, she has those birth pains. You see, so things will be leading up to the ultimate destruction. You see? Here it is, you know, you got the nine months. If you watch a baby, you watch a woman in her pregnancy, if you watch a video, the, she took a picture every day for nine months, you know, you eventually see that baby getting bigger and bigger, the, the you know, <laughs> her belly getting bigger and bigger, you see, ultimately until what? Until the day that she gave that birth, you know, and so you will see the signs of things getting gradually worse and worse. And that sudden destruction, those contraction pains, you know, that they will be there. You see, so there, there, there's, there's signs showing you all around that, that the Lord, you know, is ultimately coming back, you know, and they're not going to be able to escape it because once those birth pains start, once those labor pains and those contractions start, you know, they happen, what, more consistently. And not only do the, the consistency, you know, the time span between them happening, they happen uh, 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 more intense than the, the, the pain of the woman's pain is more intense. So that's why, you know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shemash, when we started out, evils are going to increase. Greater evils are going to happen hereafter. You see? Um, I got your research. Uh, get your precepts, bro. Uh, real quick, Isaiah 45 and 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Mm -hmm. I form the light, I create darkness, I make peace and create evil. Yahweh by Shemel Shai, he's the one doing all these things. You know, so shouldn't you fear him? Shouldn't you get in line with what the Lord, you know, got going on? You know, these judgments, you see, he's the one uh, causing these things to happen or for things to shake. You know, and this is what we're telling our people to get right and to repent before he brings a great evil and destruction, a great darkness. <laughs> You see that you're not going to be able to survive. And these, that's that hour of temptation that's especially coming upon the earth. You got it, bro. One um, more? Yeah, yep. Jeremiah 30 and 6. Ask ye now and see whether do a man travail of a child. Hmm. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail and all phases are turned to paleness? 
Yeah, and that that's that's going to be a result of the sudden destruction that men these these hard rocks out here, niggas on the niggas that stand on the block, you know, ten degree weather, you know, slinging their dope, you know what I mean, doing all this oh, wickedness. These niggas are going to be as a woman in travail, you know, she all in all types of pain, you know, their their faces are going to be pel pelvis. When you see them. They're not gonna have any life, in, in, you know. They're not gonna have a, a smile on their face. You see, and this is what we're telling our people: those smiles, those are uh, those happy days. The day you get to cuddle up, cuddle, cuddle up with your with your woman all day. The, them things coming to an end, you know. Mm -hmm. Going out to eat, partying, shaking your asses, all those things are coming to an abrupt end. You see, and that's that time of trouble that's coming. You got it. That was it. Um, you want to read verse 7? Come. Yeah. Jeremiah 30 and 7, it reads, At last, for the day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. That's right. At last, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. So a day, a time of trouble, you know, Oh, it, that's a hell of a day. You know, you think you think, you know, that you have bad days. You so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. Cause that's what was talking about. Jacob, right? A time of trouble for you. You know, oh, you know, well, we 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 on two days while no power, no food. We survived hurricanes. All right. Well, you thought that was rough. A day that's coming hereafter is going to be worse than that. But but there is hope because they said that he shall be saved out of it. Who's the he? You know, that's that great that's that grape of the cluster, the elect, the remnant who are measuring the times, who are taking the uh, who who are watching for the second return of our Lord, taking these things and taking this time seriously to get themselves right for the return of Yahweh by Shema Shai. Uh that was, that it. was it, brother? Yeah. Right, um get your uh get your precept and then we're gonna go back to the brother Shamar and read down to verse six and then we'll we're gonna bring out Ecclesiastes the third chapter. This is Jeremiah chapter three verse fourteen. Turn O bad sliding children, said the Lord. You have about some own side. For I am married unto you, mm -hmm. and I will take you one of a city and two of a family. And I will bring you to Zion. That's right. So turn that backsliding uh, children for Yahweh Shema Shai is married unto us. And as a woman, your desire, you know, as a as a spiritual woman, as the Lord has likened the children of Israel to a calmly and delicate woman, you see, we're our desire is supposed to be to our husband. So the whole purpose of our uh, of our existence is to be a servant unto Yahweh Shema Shai to serve the Lord with fear and trembling. You know, and to, in order for you to do those things, you gotta turn back to him. You gotta repent. You know, and that will cause you to what being being two out of or was it one out of a family and two out of a city. You know, so that's the small scale. That's the that's the scarcity of who's going to be saved out of this place. You know, but look, that 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 could be you. You know, that could be you being saved out of that time of trouble. You know, you should want it to be you. You know, in order for you, uh, in order, uh. uh for you to qualify, you know, first of all, predestination, but the scriptures they put on, therefore, as the elect of the most high, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. So there's things that you can do. If that will enter into life, you know, scriptures say, What did the Lord Yahweh I say? Keep the commandments. You know, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery. You know, no eating pork, shrimp, crab, lobster. Go ahead and throw that out there for you, uh, Christians. You see, no celebrating your Christmas, uh, your birthday. Uh, uh, Halloween, all these uh, pagan holidays, you know, and the Lord's going to bring you back to Zion, you know, starting with this knowledge so we can make your own of those chariots out of here from this nuclear destruction that's coming. Any more on that, bro? Come on. Um, it, brothers don't got any precepts. You can go back to that, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 4. This is, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 4 mm -hmm. says, But ye brethren are not in darkness, that, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Yeah, it says, But ye brethren are not in darkness. Why? Because we are the children of the light and the children of the day. Because what? 
uh, we are followers of Yahweh Shai, who is the light of the world. You know, and since we are followers of the light of the world, you know, which is light of uh, which is Yahweh Shai, He's given us the light of life, which is this truth, which is this knowledge. You know that that gives us the details. You know the insight of what the will of the heavenly Father is, the secrets, the mysteries. You know, you think of someone in the dark. You know, if you walk into a room that's full of darkness, you don't know what's going on in that room. You know, there could be a lamp in the corner. There could be a, a bowl of fruit on the table. But as soon as you turn on that light, you can see clearly what's happening. So we see clearly what's going on in the world. You see? Because we're not children of darkness. You got it. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. Go ahead. We are... <clears throat> It says, we are not of the night, nor of darkness. Mm -hmm. Therefore, let us not sleep as as do those. I mean, it's like it. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Yeah, let us not sleep as do others. So some of our people are asleep. They're knocked out, you know, cold. You know, we blow in the trumpet, we sound the alarm, telling them to get right, tell them to get ready for the great and terrible day of the Lord. But what they're they're drunk, they're hung over from the from the uh from the philosophies and way in Babylon, they're stuck in their ways. They don't want to rise in the part and get out of this place. Because a rise in the part that takes action. You know, our people they, they wanna they wanna stay asleep here in America. You know, they wanna make this place their rest. So we got, we got, we we can't sleep as do others, but we got to watch. We got, we got to be upon our watch. You know, we got to be standing upon the high tower, blowing the trumpet and sober minded. You know, you can, you know, you, you know, you drink during the day, you might be chill. You you drink at night, you know, push you straight to sleep sometimes, you know. So you, you getting drunk, you know, off the, the, the ways of this world, you know. Oh, you got to invest in crypto. You got, you got to do all of this. You know, things are only going to get better. You know, this is a perfect time. It's 2022. You know, if you if you got a job, you're not an entrepreneur. I don't know what you're doing. You know, that's that's you being drunk off in, in the cares of this life. You know, which that's going to cause the day of the Lord to come upon you on the wares. Um, verse holding anything? Yeah, I do. Uh, I got that's the spirit. I got that preacher which you just quoted. I was, uh, um, that yeah, I got one too. Yeah, that Luke. Can I get the Luke and then Kabai? You can get your precept. This is St. Luke, chapter 21, verse 34. Yep. And take heed to yourself, least at any time your hearts be overcharged with sufficing. Yeah, if I may say, it says, and take heed to yourselves. You know, so you're supposed to be examining yourselves. Yahweh Shai, you know, tells you, you know, Yahweh Shai come the volume of the book, you know, it was written of him. You know, so scriptures talk about, you know, till I come, give attendance to reading, to doctrine, to exhortation. You know, to, to godliness, you know, so you, you're supposed to be attentive to these things, you know, uh, of reading, make sure brothers are studying, make sure they're watching the videos, make sure you know what's going on, you know, in the cities near you, you know, across the four corners of earth, you know, talking about uh, self first and foremost, you see, you got, so you got to be examining yourself, knowing what's evil for yourself, you see, one more time, brother. Mm -hmm. Say Luke chapter 21, verse 34. And take heed to yourselves, least at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting mm -hmm. and drunkenness. Yeah, it's a surfeiting and drunkenness. Surfeiting is that, that feelingness of excess after having that, that hangover feeling, after having that drink. You know, that surfeiting, that drunkenness, you know, just doing too much, you know, called up in the ways of this world, which we were all there. At a point, you know, but this world is that old man is there, you know, constantly knocking the door, trying to get back in and bring you back, you know, who you used to be. That's why that's where the fight lies, you know, those temptations, you know. So you gotta fight this good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. And 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 when times of trouble and heaviness come, you gotta make sure you're cleaving on to the Lord, you know, and departing not away. You see. At least you know he, he you know at least you go back into the world you know you get off that path and the farther you go away from the the Lord and Him guiding you the easier you're gonna be acceptable to these different uh, spirits and demons. It said you got it. Yep. In cares of this life, and so that day 
come upon you unaware. Yeah, that's that thief in the night. You call up in the cares of this life, but you hear about anyone's conversation. All of these people, all of these people's conversation outside, you know, the men, some of the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, you know, and the multitude of the believers that believe on the doctrine of Yahweh by Shema and Shai, you know, th their conversation is, you know, forward in their life here in America. And the way they talk, you know, how they're fully persuaded and trust, and they trust in the system, they think. America ain't never going to go down. America ain't never going to see uh, the loss of children. Ain't never going to see adversity. You know? So you can't be caught up in the cares of this life. You know, all, you know, you can't be on the phone with your damn two-third cousin all day. You know? You can't be on the phone with niggas at the job all day shooting the shit with them. You see, you got to surround yourself with like-minded individuals who knows what times we're living in. You know? Super say iron sharp if iron. So a man sharpened sharpen the continents of his of his neighbor or, or of his friend. You see? So you're supposed to be sharpening each other's minds, you know, getting them prepared for this ultimate test that's coming, the hour of temptation, where the, the karagma is, is going to be fully implemented out here. going to be on Main Street, front, front Street, you see? And then what are you going to do when there ain't no food on the grocery shelves? Yeah, bro's got it. I never got something. Kabat. I got two precepts. You got it. Sirach 27 and 12, if thou be among the indiscreet, observe the time, but be continually among men of understanding. Hmm. Yep, if thou be among the indiscreet, the unwise, you know, you got to observe the time. You're like, well, okay, well, you know, you got, well, for one, well, you got to understand, you got to be in, always in the back of your mind. We in a time of trouble, you know, so look, we, we in the spirit of using this world as not abusing it. You know, somebody mm -hmm. might be in your life for a quick season to help you out, you know, financially. You know what I mean? And, you know, that might be it. You don't got to go to the bar with him and hang out with him. You know, you know, oh, you know, that was cool. We closed our business deal. Let's go out and celebrate. Now, you don't got to do all that. You know, you stay on the path. You know, the water y'all by Shema Shai. You, know, you call a brother up. You you turn on the video. You know, you do things that are gonna feed the spirit. You know, not the flesh. You got it. Yep. It says, um, that's pretty much it. Come. I got one more. Um, mm -hmm. This is a uh, Ecclesiastes chapter nine verse twelve. For man also know of not his time, as the fishes that are taken in the evil net. And as the birds that are caught in the snare, so are the sons of men snared in the evil time mm. when it falleth suddenly upon them. Yeah, that's heavy. Read it one more time. Yep, this is Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 12. For man also knoweth not his time, as the fishes that are taken in the evil net, and as the birds that are caught in the snare, so are the sons of men snared in the evil time. When it falleth suddenly upon them. Yeah, so just like a man does not know his time, you know what? The Lord, you don't know when the Lord's going to pull your card, you know, and bring judgment upon you. You don't know when Jacob's trouble is going to be here. You see? And and here it is. These evil times are coming. And you people, you know, you're walking, you know, carelessly upon the earth. You're walking straight into a trap. We understand that he, he that dig of a pit shall fall therein. But what he Esau is digging the pit, and for you, Jake's, because he's the rod, oh Syrian, the rod of my anger, the staff of thy hand is my indignation. This man is the sword of the heavenly Father. He beareth not the sword in vain. You know, if if thou was that Psalms one twenty five and three, can I brother get that, Papa Show? Just real quick, you know, because these evil times are coming. Our people are walking straight into these evil times unawares, you know. And uh, uh, we don't have anything to fear because the Lord's on our side. Um, yeah, Psalms 125 and 3. I got you. This is Psalms 125 verse 3. For the rod of the wicked should not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Least the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. Yeah, so his rod, his power, the power that he has... You know, to deceive the power that this man has, you know, which is really the sword, you know, at the end of the day, because that's what he's about to come down with. 
you know, is not going to not going to rest upon the righteous. You see, at least the righteous put forth their hand towards iniquity and two thirds of, you know, Israel, which we are the righteous nation down here upon their death, put forth their hands towards iniquity. You see, so his rod is about to rest upon them. You see, so this snare that this man is laying for you, and you trust in, you trust in this man, you trust in this system, you, you're going to fall. You see? Hold Isaiah 30 and uh, 8 or verse 9. You got a precept about? Yeah. This is the rock 40 and 8. Such things happen unto all flesh, both man and beast, and that is sevenfold more upon sinners. Mm -hmm. De death and bloodshed, strife yeah. and... Yeah, death, death is coming. Death is coming for you people. You know, that's what the Lord is about to come for the sinners of his people in these days. Because there's some there's some of us who believe in Yahweh by Shema Shai who are on this earth today who are not going to taste the death. You see? Mm -hmm. So it's a death, bloodshed, you know what I mean? All type of, you know, and that's a gruesome way, you know, blood being shed. That's 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 a violent, that's a violent act. One man against another. You ain't got that movie. Of Fury with, with Brad Pitt, it's a war movie. You know, he asked that you had a preacher, preacher guy, you know, one of the war guys, they call him preacher. He said, he asked one of the new uh, soldiers, he said, Are you saved? And he said, Well, I'm baptized. He said, No, I asked you if you're saved. You know, he, he didn't answer them. And he said, Wait till you see it. He said, See what? He said, Wait till you see what a man can do to another man. You know, so when there ain't no food on these grocery stores, you're going to really see that the true. The true hatred that these people have for one another. How they, they don't have any true love. They don't have any type of compassion. These people are brute beasts. And when they're hungry, they're going to eat each other. You know, that's that violent blood being shed. You got it. Yep, it says strife and sword. Mm -hmm. Calamities and famine. Tribulation yep. and the... Yeah, I'm sorry, but it says strife, sword, you know, fightings, you know what I mean? Different uh, killing instruments are going to be used. The, the gun, which there's more guns in America than there are people. Hmm. You see? Calamities, different calamities are just going you know, to be happening. You you know, buildings falling down. Here this buildings just fall. They can't even tell you why the hell it happened. You know? <laughs> you, you know? But we can. This, the Bible tells you why these things happen. These people are sinners. And this is their judgment, you see? Mm -hmm. It says, tribulation and the scourge. These things are created for the wicked, mm -hmm. and for their sakes came the flood. Yeah, these things are created for the wicked, you see? You see how the Lord does make a separation between the good and between the evil, between those that serve him and those that serve him not? See? So those who serve him... Esau's power is not going to stretch forth over them. You see, we're going to be under the the the, uh, the covering of the Almighty. You know, which we're, we're under that covering now, if you can receive it. You see? But you yeah. people are under the cover of the shadow of this world, a shadow of darkness. You know? And Esau eating them in that darkness. You know? He, 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 take, he leading you down just as he slayed. And just as he uh, led... Uh, Able out there to that field to slay him. You see, that same spirit is in these Edomites today. You see, the spirit of Cain. You know, he's leading you down this path. Darkness is all around you. This man don't like you. He he gonna put you to death. You got it. It says nope. that was yep, it. Yep. Okay. Bible, Bible, Bible Kishaza, I got two precepts. You got it, brother. So I can. My first one is Sarah chapter 5, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Say not, I have sinned. And what harm have happened unto me? Go ahead. For the Lord, Yahweh tomorrow shy, is long suffering. He will know why let thee go. Yeah, say not that I have sinned, and what harm happened unto me? Because here it is. When our people hear that they're not supposed to be strip porn crab lobster, you know, they always have this rebuttal. They have this smart remark. Well, I've been doing these things all my life, you know. But now that you've been told, you know, now now, now you're about to really be jacked up. Because the Lord is warning you and telling you, you know, look, look, you know, I I, I was long-suffering. You know, I understand you discontinued from your heritage, you know. You know, took a while for the word to come back around to you. But now, look, I'm telling you, it's either my way or the highway with the Lord. You got it, bro. Read it one more time. Mm -hmm. This is a rock, 
chapter 5, verse 4, say not, I have sinned, and what harm have happened unto me? Mm -hmm. For the Lord, Yahweh is long suffering. He will in no wise let thee go. Yeah, he will in no wise let thee go. Yahweh is not going to let our people go. You know, that he ain't going to let them go. It ain't happening. You know, you, you're going to have to pay. Everyone's got to pay of what they owe, what they owe, what they done down here upon the earth. What in, in, you know, in order for you to pay, you have to give up a sacrifice. That's how you got to pay the Lord back. And right now, as the elder Apostle Haro goes into America, is that sacrifice is the altar. You know, you people are, are the sacrifice. You know what the elect are going to be giving up for their sacrifice? The blood of the lamb. You know, a sacrifice without spot and blemish, the firstborn. You see? And that's going to be well accepted, you know, for the multitude of our sins. You see? You got it? Yep. I'm going to finish at verse 6. Verse okay. 5. It says, concerning propitiation, be not without fear to add sin unto sin. Yeah, finish at verse 7. It says, concerning propitiation, which that's talking about concerning a sacrifice. You know, so our people, they offer sacrifices to the Heavenly Father, and they think they're good. You know, oh, yeah, you know, I'm just going to throw up the fat sacrifice, you know, keep going. They're going to, and then they just add sin to sin, you know, which the fear of the Lord, you know, it drives away iniquity, you know, and, and where is this present? And also, the fear of the Lord, it turns away wrath. You see, so here it is, you know, don't be without fear to add sin to sin. When, when you when you sin, you're supposed to consider, your, yeah, that's supposed to put you in the stop right there. You know, oh, I got to consider, you know, oh, I've been sinning my whole life. Well, I got to stop, you know, because you're on that broad gate. And if you continue down that path, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to find destruction at the end that, at the end of that path. You see, and that's what we're telling our people. You got it. Mm -hmm. It says, and say not his mercy is great. He will be pacified for the multitude of my sins. Mm -hmm. For mercy, okay. for mercy and wrath come from him. Yep. And his in the nation resteth upon sinners. Yeah. So mercy and wrath coming from Yahweh by Shema Shai. Don't think you're gonna get away from the Lord, because his indignation, his righteous anger, which he's justified in judging you. You see, that's what that means, indignation, righteous anger, you know, because you made an agreement, you know, so he's justified in, ju in judging our people. We made an agreement to seek the Lord God of Israel, you know, with all our heart and with all, with all our minds, and that who, whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel uh, should be put to get death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. You see, and here it is, you all, we all rejoiced at the oath, you know, we, we you know, at a celebration, you know, I, I agree to do this, this is great. You see, so his indignations for you not falling upon that is going to rest upon the sinners of his people. And that's what we hear to tell our people to turn back from their sins or be destroyed. You got it, bro. Mm -hmm. Verse 7. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord, Yahweh by Shema Rashad, and put not off from day to day. Uh huh. For suddenly should the wrath of the Lord come forth. And in thy security, Thou should be destroyed mm -hmm. and perish in a day of vengeance. Yeah, 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 exactly. So don't don't wait. You know, why are you waiting for? Oh, you know, well, you know, I'm gonna wait. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna wait till at least winter time's over before I start see, before I start anything new. You know, I just got this New Year's revolution plan. You know, blah blah blah. And here it is: the day of the Lord's come upon you as a thief in the night, and you're gonna be destroyed out here. You know, the day of vengeance is coming. You're going to perish in it. That, that's what's coming. Vengeance is coming. That, that's not nice. Why would you want to wait to get right with your power when you understand that vengeance is coming? You see? You got it. Um, You got a precept? Yeah, I had one more. Yeah, go ahead. Oh. And then, uh, Shamar, you got a precept you want to bring out? Come on. Come on. All right. You got it, bro. You brothers got it. Go ahead. Yeah, I got one. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let me get it, because I don't want to get past it too fast. It's, it's going into that uh, Sirach 5 and 4 you brought out. Okay, come on. Yep, yep. It's Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. Uh -huh. because, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, 
Mm. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Yeah, because the so called white man says it's okay. I'm sorry, brother. Because the so called white man says it's okay yeah. to do whatever you want down here upon the earth. Our people just out here, you know, rioting, you know, doing all type of wickedness, mm -hmm. you know. But here it is the prophets of the Lord out there telling that's not how it's supposed to be. You got it. Yep. It says, verse 12 Though a sinner do evil a hundred times and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear Yahweh, which fear before him. Yeah, his days are prolonged. You know what I mean? You get accolades, you get rewarded for committing all types of wickedness. You get woman of the year, man. That you know, you get woman of the year for being for making the song about your walk. You know, here, you know, it's crazy. But but let's see, let's see what the heavenly Father has to say about these people committing all this wickedness. Yep, it says verse fourteen, Ecclesiastes eight and thirteen, Slakia. But it shall not be well with the wicked. Neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before Yahweh. Yep, it shall not be well with the wicked. See, you see how the wicked, the wicked, the wicked don't get away. You know, the wicked don't, the, the wicked don't escape, my man. You get, you get got, you get done with, you get dealt with. That's what's going to happen. The wicked are going to get dealt with. You know, uh, can brothers hold two precepts at Psalm seven and I believe seven and eleven or seven and nine. The Most High is angry with the wicked every day. And uh, the other one slipped my mind. But go ahead, uh, Shamar, get your priest up. Mm. This is uh, 2 Timothy 2 and 3. Therefore thou endure hardness as a good soldier of a Mashiach Yahweh shot. Yeah, um, it's like, hold it real quick, bro. The priest up is... Um, First Peter's four and eighteen, I believe, where it talks about the righteous are scarcely going to be saved. Um, read your piece up one more time, the brother uh, Shamar. This is Second uh, Timothy two and three. Therefore, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of a Mashiach Yahweh shot. Yeah, thou therefore endure hardness because you know uh, while we got to enter in at the straight gate. You know, in order to enter into life. So hardness is going to come. You know, here it is. It's us against the whole wide world. Literally. It's Yahweh by Shema Shai against the world. We on the Lord's team. You know, so we're going to be hated. You know, we're going we're gonna to go through things. This world is dead set against us. You got demons of all these people got demons on them at the job. You know, giving you a hard time, trying to rouse you up, trying to get a reaction out of you, trying to exhort their power over you. You know, because when someone calls you to break character, that's that's them having power over you. You know, and these people, these demons don't got power over us. You know, so we gotta endure hardness and continue to cleave onto the Lord. So we gotta keep our composure. You know, in this thing. Go ahead. No man that war entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, mm -hmm. that he may please who him slack it. That he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. Yeah, so if you're at war, you know, it's war, it's soldier mode. You got to be in that mindset of, you know, these are war times, spiritual war. You see at all times, you know, you can't be entangled, all tr entangled, you know, getting all tangled up. You see, you know, with this with this woman, this, 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 uh, this America, this great whore. You know, lying down in bed with her, you know, being at rest here in America. You know, you got to be in that war. Like, you got to gird up the loins of your mind and, and, and know what times we're living in. You see, that you may please him who have called you to be a soldier. Because a soldier, he got he got a job to do. You know, so we got a job to do down here upon the earth. And it's to serve Yahweh by Shema and Shai. Any more, brother? That was it. Con. Um, Y'all brothers can get that, those two I called for. Yeah. This is First Peter, chapter four. You want me to start at seventeen? Yeah. Yep. Yep. First Peter, chapter four, verse seventeen. Oh, what's the sixteen say that all they that live godly in Yahweh Shai shall suffer persecution? No, sixteen says, "Yeah, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed." Okay. Yeah. Read that. And yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good too. So, this is First Peter chapter four verse sixteen. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. Yeah, 
if any man suffer as a follower of Yahweh Shai, let him not be ashamed. You see, because, you know, <laughs> what, what we got to be ashamed for? We suffering for, for righteousness sake while these people are suffering for their evil doings. You see? Go ahead, brother. But let him glorify Yahweh Shai on this behalf. Mm -hmm. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of Yahweh Shai. Shai. The and time has come. I'm sorry, brother. It says uh, the time is coming. We in that time now. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That judgment must begin at the house of the Most High. These are these guys that are, that are calling themselves Israelites, who are who are bucking up against the, the doctrine. You know, look look at this guy wrapped the news. You know, the, the Lord's begin at His sanctuary. The, the guys that know they're Israelites. You know, which you know. Ultimately, we all we all are, are, are you know, going to be judged if we ain't right. You see, so that's why we got to stay on the path. We got to make sure we're doing things. You know, the camera's always on. It's time to get in order. You know, the camera's mm -hmm. always on. You know, the camera's always on. The Lord's always watching. Oh, you know, what would you forget? You see, go ahead. First Peter 4 and 17. But the time has come that judgment must begin. At the house of Yahweh Bashim Abashah. Mm hmm. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of Yahweh Bashim Abashah? And we, we've been reading what's the end. What, what's the, what's going to be the end of these guys who obey not the gospel? We already know what the end of them is going to be. We, we read it. We, we've been reading it. <laughs> the end is death and destruction upon those that obey not the gospel. And the Lord's coming back in the flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that obey not the gospel of our Lord. You see? That, that's what's coming. In the flaming fire, vengeance is coming for you, my man. Any more? Verse 18. If the righteous scarcely be saved, mm. where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The righteous, the righteous is going to be saved. You see that? But scarcely. You know, and why is it going to be scarcely? Because the Lord, you know, he wants to perform a miracle upon it. He, he wants he wants to show off. You know? The Lord, the Lord, you know, that guy in that marathon race, you know, the, the gun went off and he, the Lord's stretching still. You know what I mean? He he the, <laughs> he's stretching. He, he over here. <laughs> he, he getting everybody a head start and he just gonna hit the guns. You know, he gonna be he gonna get first in line in no time. You know what I mean? So the Lord is scarcely going to save us just to show his power. You know, just to show, uh, you see, you see what I can do? And the righteous scarcely are going to be saved. The godly and the sinner, you know, they, they, where they, they going to appear right there in that judgment, in that lake of fire, you know, which is those ICBM nuclear missiles fought, coming upon America and creating a, a, a fire so large, you know, that John the Reveler described it as a lake of fire. You see? That was it, brother? Yeah, that was it. But I do have yeah. a precept. Um, anybody, uh, I'm going to get that Psalms first. Uh, yeah. 7 and seven and 9 11. or 7 and 11. This and is we'll, we'll bring out, we'll, after this, we'll bring out, like, you know, maybe two more. You know? Count it, count it. You got it, bro. This is Psalms 7 and 11. The Most High judge of the righteous and... The Most High is angry with the wicked every day. Yeah, so you know, and why why is the Most High angry with the wicked every day? Because ultimately, the Lord is allowing, you know, well, you know, we're judged now. I'll break that part down. We're judged now so that we're not judged with the world, like it tells you in First uh, Corinthians or Second Corinthians, eleven chapter. You know, you brothers can look that up on your own time. You know, but. You know, the Most High judged the righteous, and the Most High is angry with the wicked every day. So he's angry with the wicked. And the Lord is allowing them to build up this tab, build up this great debt. You know, America got to be justified of this destruction that's coming. You know, they got to they gotta live up to it. <laughs> Jake got to live up to the judgment that's coming. Just like we got to mm -hmm. live up to, to, to the reward, you know, to the best of our ability. You know, which we, you know, we ain't never going to do that. You know what I mean? But still... If you brothers understand what I'm saying, they gotta live up to that judgment. The the the, the cup gotta be filled to measure of their wickedness. That was it, right? Huh. 
Okay. Uh, now come you get your preset. Okay. Um, this is Colossians chapter three, verse one. If ye then be risen with Hamashiach, seek those things which are above. Yeah. If ye then be risen, you know, it is the spirit that quickens the flesh profit of nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So this word has quickened us. It has made us alive. It has caused us to be risen. You see, and ye then be arisen, risen with the Mashiach, you know, seek those things which are above, you know, the, which is his knowledge, the kingdom of heaven, you know, which came down from the heavens, you know, which Yahweh shall sit down from the heavens, you see? So you're supposed to be, you're supposed to be seeking the knowledge of this kingdom, you know, the kingdom of heaven, the, the, the understanding of these scriptures, you see? Go ahead. Where Hamashiach sitteth on the right hand of Yahweh, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Yeah, because all this is here today and gone tomorrow. You know, whatever brothers got, you know, whatever brothers don't got, you know, whatever it is here in America, the only thing that's getting on those ships is, is our spirits, you know, that contain the knowledge of the Lord. You see? Go ahead. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Hamashiach. Yeah, so we are, we are dead to this world, you know, and our life is hid. Our life is hid in these scriptures. See, we have a we have a life promised to us, you know, right here in this right here in this book. In the book, in the Holy Bible, there is a life promised for the elect, you know, and that's what that life is the life that we are waiting for, the kingdom of heaven. You see? Go ahead, brother. It says verse four, when Hamashiach, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Yeah, so when our when Yahweh Shai who gave us life and promised, you know, us life, you see, uh, life more abundantly, you see, as he gave his life, you know, for the sheep, you see, he promised to give us life more abundantly. It tells you in know, John the 10th chapter, you see, uh, when he appears, that's when we're going to receive those things. And that's what we're watching for. That's what we're telling our people to look out for, you know. Um, if brothers don't got anything else, we can close out in the Isaiah 33. And six. I got a precept. Go ahead. This is uh, Philippians chapter three, verse uh, twenty. For our conversation is in the heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Yahweh Hamashiach. Yeah, that's it. So you, you, Jake, saying you're gonna keep the law, the law, the law, the law. You know, the law ain't gonna save you, my man. You know, our conversation is in the heavens. The way we're conducting ourselves through the Spirit and power of Yahweh by Shema Shai. You know, it's according to the will of the Heavenly Father. What we're doing is well-pleasing. You know, <coughs> walking in the grace of the Lord. You know, keeping those commandments to the best of our ability. Working on the inward man. You know, because we don't care about, you know, you Jakes. You know, we don't care about getting a, a glory and praise from you Jakes, man. We want, we want the honor and praise that come from Yahweh by Shema Shai. And as us being his woman, how can you make your man happy? By serving him. You know what I mean? Doing those things which are well pleasing unto him. You know, so that's what we're doing. Read one more time, brother. This is uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. For our conversation is in the heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Yeah, whence we looking for the Savior. We looking for Yahweh Shai. You know, we hasten on his coming. And in, in, in order in order for you to look for the Savior, you gotta be watching and measuring these times. That's how you know. That's how you know where we are in, in, in the return of our Lord. By watching, you know, by staying diligent, staying in the spirit, you know, constantly having the Lord on your mind, even when you're with uh uh your woman, when you're with, you know, uh the, the people at your job. You know, you want to have the Lord on your mind to the best of your ability, you know? Mm -hmm. It says, who shall change our vile bodies that may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. Well, yep. According... Yeah, who's, who, you, look, <laughs> these vile bodies that we got, these bodies are sent here. These guys trying to keep the law. We about to get new bodies. Mm -hmm. You know, the the law, the law, the law. Let's see, look, we're we going to keep doing what we're doing, you know, this, that's been prescribed to us. 
through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shema because we have the eyes to see this thing, to see what's written in these scriptures. We have the, the eyes to see, you know, and navigate this book and, and see the eternal life, the path that we're supposed to follow. Why, why you guys keep doing what you're doing, you know, go ahead and, you know, y'all might as well get the factory for the fringes and everything. Go ahead. We, we're going to continue doing what we're doing. Y'all can continue on over there, mm -hmm. you know. The most high is about to change these vile bodies, you know. Every, come on, raise bodies through, you know. <laughs> Finished out here. We need some new bodies. You got it. Yep, it reads on Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according <clears throat> to the working whereby he is able to even subdue all things unto himself. Mm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. We might get those new bodies, you know, just as Yahweh Shai got those new bodies, you know, and he's about to give us the power to, to, to subdue death. We about to conquer death. That's right. You know, the, the sentence on every man, we about to conquer that, you know, Lord is one more part of that number. And we about to live forever, literally about to be kings and gods on the planet. But, but Jake don't want that. Jake, Jake want a nine to five. Jake want McDonald's. Jake want to be able to pop some food in the microwave and get it done in five minutes. You see what I mean? But um, can, can we close down the Isaiah 33? And six. Whoever got it. You got that some more? Yeah. This is Isaiah 33 and six. It says, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of Yahweh Bashim Shai is his treasure. Yeah, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. So with all thy getting, you know, uh, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom and with all thy getting, get understanding. Because your wisdom, you know, that's what you're going to be able to use to navigate during the time of trouble. You understanding? Oh, I shouldn't. I shouldn't trust Esau Edom. You understanding? Uh, 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 discernment and discretion. You know that's 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 going to give you guidance during these times. You know that's going that's going to show you how to move. You understanding the future. You know, well, it's teaching us how to move now. We we already. In, if you understand, if you think all hell breaking loose, you're gonna only use the wisdom. You know, you you in the wrong playing field. You, you gotta start using the wisdom now. You gotta exercise yourself in wisdom. You know. The, the, you got the desire of wisdom. The desire of wisdom bring us to a kingdom, you know. And all those who are desire of wisdom, you gotta go through a, this discipline state. You got you gotta learn discipline. That's what these fiery trials and temptations are for. To build up your discipline, to build up your uh, uh your you you know, so you can get good with the basketball. And just gonna throw you in the game, you know, because the the game is coming. The test is coming. You see, and you gotta get ready for it. You got it. Read it again. Public show. It says Isaiah 33 and 6. And wisdom and knowledge should be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. Mm -hmm. The fear of Yahweh Bashim al Shai is his treasure. Yeah, the fear of Yahweh Bashim al Shai is <clears throat> his treasure. So this is a treasure, you know, that we have. You know, by fearing the Lord, we stumble upon this treasure. Here it is. The Lord's given us the fear, the, 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 the ability to fear him. And to consider our ways and to repent, you know, so don't take that treasure for lightly because the fear of the Lord, you know, that's that wisdom, you know, that we've stumbled upon, you see. And this wisdom is the instructions to to everlasting life, you know, everlasting rulership. But, what, you know, um, y'all brothers can close this out. That was, you know, you, you want to say anything else about it? Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Um, you got it, Shamar. You can close it out. You know, Lord's willing, this was a uh, edifying sit down. You know, we was unable to go out to the highways and byways. But, you know, before we go any further, we want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory <coughs> to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh. Yahweh. By Shem. Yahweh. By Next double honor to the Apostle and the Elders that taught us the 100% truth according to the King James Bible. You know, double shalom to the brothers that went on the highways and byways today. And, you know, did the work of the Lord. You know, until next week, you know, Lord's will. 
Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.